We are also learning more about the secret meetings and detailed planning that went into the drone strike. A small group from the Biden administration monitored the developments for months as the president closely scrutinized intelligence findings. At one point, he even analyzed a model of the home that Al Zawahiri was using to hide out in. Tom Dempsey is live at the White House with more on that threat. Tom? Hey, good morning, Mitch. Yeah, this manhunt to find Ayman al Zawari stretched back 21 years following 9-11. But earlier this year, really, everything began to change when intelligence leaders gathered crucial information that led to them learning about the whereabouts of al Zawari and even gathering crucial information about the house where he was staying in, this hideaway house in Kabul, which they were able to reconstruct to a scale model for further analysis. But Regarding this intelligence gathering and such and what led to this strike, we wanted to put together a quick timeline for our viewers to make this a little bit easier to understand. Uh, dating back to April is when the intelligence started to go up through the chain of command. Uh, information continued to be shared, including, uh, you know, Ayman al Zawari's living conditions and his daily routines about how he would even spend time on a balcony at this house in Kabul. And intelligence officers even were able to put together detailed plans of the building where he was staying in. By May and June, a small group, including President Joe Biden and the vice president, held multiple briefings, which led to the location of Ayman al Zawari being confirmed. Then on July 1st, another key date in regards to all this, a meeting in the Situation Room inside the White House led to them analyzing that scale model of this house in Kabul where al Zawari was staying, as well as analyzing the weather conditions in the area and also the possibility of collateral damage. All this led to this past Thursday when President Joe Biden, who was still isolating inside the White House with COVID, gave final approval for this strike, which happened early Sunday local time in Kabul. Uh, very important to note that no one else was injured or even died in this strike uh, in Kabul, which is interesting considering too that uh, Al Zawari's family, who was also staying inside the house, apparently was also inside the house during the time of this strike, Mitch. So Tom, we don't have formal diplomatic relations with Afghanistan, but we do apparently have drones flying over their capital city firing Hellfire missiles into residential areas. So where does that, where does that leave us for U.S.-Afghan relations? Yeah, relations. Any sort of talk about relations between the two countries has to involve the Doha Agreement. Basically, to break that down and make it simple for our viewers, uh, it was an exchange between the U.S. and Afghanistan where the U.S. would withdraw its forces as long as Afghanistan would not give be you know a safe harbor for Al Qaeda in the country. So, uh, Secretary of State uh, Antony Blinken saying that this, uh, you know. The Taliban really violated that agreement because intelligence leaders showed that they, the Taliban knew that al Zawari was staying in the country uh, of Afghanistan. Uh, the U.S. gave no warning of this attack to the Taliban. Uh, and then, as we just heard, you know, and, and know this morning that that attack was carried out on Saturday. This strike was carried about uh, on Sunday in Kabul. So, again, uh, relations were strained even before all this, but this strike apparently uh, probably going to make things even even more strained between the two countries, Mitch. And that is Tom Dempsey reporting live from the White House for us this morning. Thank you, Tom. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.